Now the test will begin. You should answer the questions as you listen, because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions one to five. Hi, I'm Debbie. How can I help? Hi, my name's David. I'm just looking to place an advertisement on the main union notice board to sell a laptop and a few accessories, if that's possible. Sure, that's not a problem. I take it you are a member of the students' union. Yes, I am. Right then, I'll just get a form up, and as there is no one around and it looks as if it's going to be quiet for a while, I'll just type the details straight into the computer for you. Thanks very much. No problem. Shall we just title it "Laptop for Sale"? Yeah. Okay. Can you describe it generally? Well, it's in very good condition. In fact, it's hardly been used. Why are you selling it, if I may ask? Well, I've got another one which is much lighter, and I don't really need two. I see. What weight is the one you're selling? It's three point five kilograms. That is heavy these days. Can you give more details about the one you want to sell? Right.、Uh, well, it's an Allegro, and it's got all the latest programs. Okay. What about the memory? The memory is only zero point five gigabytes. And what about the screen size and the other features? Oh well,、uh, the the screen is well, let's see, it's thirty seven point five centimeters with a, a standard size keyboard and a touchpad. But I've got a cordless mouse that I can put in with it if necessary. Well, some people don't like using a touchpad. What about ports or holes for attaching things to the laptop? It's got two ports.、Mm. More modern laptops have more than two ports for all the extra attachments. They do.、Uh, let's see.、Uh, what else is important?、Uh, oh yeah, the、uh, the battery lasts for two and a half hours, which is okay, but not enough for long train journeys.、Uh, but one thing is that it's not wireless. Right. Okay. Not wireless. Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions six to ten. Now listen and answer questions six to ten. Anything else I can put on the advertisement? There's a webcam built at the top of the screen, and、uh, I can throw in a printer, a scanner, and headphones, which I, I got with it in a special deal. It also comes with its own case for carrying it around. Actually, the case is quite smart. I'm hoping these things will help it sell. They should do. Right, I think I've got all that. How much do you want for it? That I'm not sure about.、Uh, it's worth about nine hundred pounds to a thousand pounds new. Yeah, but you won't get that much if it's used, and even if it's in good condition. What about five hundred pounds? I doubt if you'd get as much as that. More like two hundred pounds or three hundred pounds. If you look at the notice board, there is one on there which is comparable to yours, and it's not more than about. Two hundred and fifty pounds, I think. As little as that. I'm afraid so. Shall we say three hundred pounds? Okay, put that. Can I take some contact details for the advert? The name's David Bristow. B R I S T O W. Yes, that's it. And、uh, a mobile or email? Both, if you want. It's D. I B underscore seven seven nine one at hotmail dot com. Okay, and the mobile? That's o nine eight seven five four two three three eight seven. That's it. If you send the picture, I'll add it and print it out and stick it up for you. Okay, I can get that to you today. Right, I'll type in here. Advert placed the twenty second of October. Fine.
and good luck with the sale. Thanks. That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 2. You will hear an accommodation officer telling students about different halls of residence. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Good afternoon and welcome to Stanton University. I'm here to tell you about the various halls of residence we have available should you choose to come here. We aim to offer accommodation in halls to all first-year students and you'll find there's a good variety to choose from. First of all, there's Brown Hall, which, as you'll see, is not the most modern of buildings, but it is very popular with some students. It's got a good sense of community, some nice refurbished kitchens, and unlike the other halls, it has recently had a gym built in its basement. Another option is Blake Residence, which is built like a large house, and so everybody cooks and eats together. It has its own sectioned-off bit of private garden, and is even more peaceful because this is an all-girls residence. Although, of course, boys are allowed to visit the hall, and, uh, I understand, frequently take part in cooking dinner. The largest hall we have is Queen's Building, and this has been upgraded recently. The original parking area has been built on so that the hall now has a large common room, and each bedroom now has its own shower room, which many students regard as a real bonus. A further option is the Parkway Flats, which won an award for design in its day. And this building now has a preservation order on it. This has meant that only a limited amount could be done to upgrade it, and the surrounding area is important, so parking is not permitted around the flats. However, the flats do have many extra facilities, such as a special computer room, a small library, and a self-service restaurant. The cost of breakfast, lunch, and dinner is covered in the fees for this hall, so it does look a bit more expensive. The last residence we can offer you is Temple Rise, which again is slightly more expensive than other halls as the rooms are larger. This has got very lovely views across to the coast, and this more than compensates for the fact that bathrooms here are shared between six students. However, the hall has domestic staff who clean the rooms once a week, so this is perhaps an attractive option for the messier amongst you. You now have 30 seconds to read questions 16 to 20. Now listen carefully and answer questions 16 to 20. 
Now, if I can just show on this wall map here where they all are, uh, you might like to go and have a look round. If you come into the main university entrance, at the first junction, you'll find that Brown Hall is on the corner opposite the theatre. So you're nice and near the station here, though I think it can get a bit noisy with traffic. The same applies to Blake residence, which is directly facing the junction to the university entrance. These halls are often used by medical students and such like, as they're out all day, so don't notice the noise. Anyway, if you then walk along Campus Road towards the main circle, you'll see the library on the corner, and Queen's Building is just past that as you head north. You will find that it is quieter here, and you may get fewer visitors. By the way, the circle is quite a feature of the campus, as it's set into the hills and has a brand new sports centre in the middle. It's worth going to look around it. Now, the Parkway Flats are on the opposite corner to the library, facing the circle, as you head towards the main buildings. The main buildings are only about a five-minute walk from here, and places in these halls go quickly, so my advice is to reserve your place as soon as possible. Then, Temple Rise is inside the circle, next to the sports centre, but further from the main university buildings. Now, if you'd like to go off and physically look... That is end of section two. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Section 3. You will hear two students, Jenna and Marco, discussing a business studies project they have to do. Now you have some time to look at questions 21 to 24. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 24. Come on, Marco. We've got to get on and sort out this project for Professor Buckley. Hang on. I want to make sure we've got all the information. Now, <laughs> where are we? Well, today we need to sort out exactly what we're going to do and how we're going to divide the work up. Okay. How long have we got, by the way? Um... The end of term is April 6th, and he said to hand it in on week 8, so that's March 25th at the latest, because the beginning of that week is the 21st, mm. so not long. Right. Have you got the notes there? Yes. He wants us to do a fairly small-scale study, like the last one, on whether or not businesses were offering more benefits to staff. Mm. And we've now got to look at the rise in older workers. It should be fairly straightforward. Yeah, as long as we keep it small. Mm. Who's marking it? I don't know. Sometimes he gets the PhD students to mark it for him. Oh, actually, it just says here, a senior lecturer. Mm. I suppose it's too much for Professor Barclay to do them all. Yeah. Anyway, how are we going to go about this? Well... We have to decide how big we want it to be and who... Yeah, we... but I think we must sort out a timetable for the project. Otherwise, nothing will get done. OK. Uh, do you want to do that? All right. I'll do it as soon as we finish here. Now you have some time to look at questions 25 to 30.
Now listen carefully and answer questions 25 to 30. Okay. What do we have to do now for the project? What's the best way to go about it? Um, well, Professor Carter suggested we set up a focus group to get some in-depth interviews, but I think that'll take a lot of time. Yeah, I agree. If we did a focus group, we'd have to spend time deciding who to include in it, and it's not necessary to do one anyway. Oh, fine. And if you agree, I think we should get in touch with the businesses on the list Professor Carter gave us and ask them if they're prepared to participate. Sounds good. Uh, then we can go there, give them questionnaires and collect them later. Exactly. OK. Then do we need to book one of those study rooms in the library so we can work together to input the data? Perhaps not, as I guess just one of us could just sort it out, actually. Yes, that would be easier. A lot of what we're doing is qualitative, so it'll be writing up rather than statistics. No software for that, I'm afraid. <laughs> <laughs> and I think it would look better if we had actual shots of some of the staff, because we're citing appearance as a factor in employability, aren't we? Yeah, OK. I'll factor that all in when I sort everything out tonight. I'm glad we decided to work together. I think it's going to work out well. Yes, well, given that we had to work in pairs on this project, I think we were right to choose each other. Hmm. We complement each other academically, as we're each good at what the other isn't. <laughs> in fact, we should have tried working together before. <laughs> yes. Now, how shall we split the work? I'll do the analysis, shall I? Oh, OK. It's just that it might be faster, because I'm used to doing it. Although your English is better than mine. I need more practice at reading, really. OK, I'll do the presentation then, if that's OK with you. Yeah, sure. I don't mind speaking in public, but I hate preparing all the notes for them. The thing is, the tutor said one person should do the whole presentation, and he said he expects me to do it because I haven't done one yet. No, that's fine. Now, let's see. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answer. Section 4. You will hear a lecture giving advice on how to present a seminar paper. First read questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. In this talk, I'm going to give some advice on how to present a seminar paper. At one time, most university teaching took the form of giving formal lectures. Nowadays, many university teachers try to involve their students more actively in the learning process. One of the ways in which this is done is by conducting seminars. In a seminar, what usually happens is this. One student is chosen to give his ideas on a certain topic. These ideas are then discussed by the other students, the participants in the seminar. What I'd like to discuss with you today is the techniques of presenting a paper at a seminar. As you know, there are two main stages involved in this. One is the preparation stage, which involves researching and writing up a topic. The other stage is the presentation stage, when you actually present the paper to your audience. It is this second stage that I am now concerned with. Let us therefore imagine that you have been asked to lead off a seminar discussion and that you have done all the necessary preparation. In other words, you have done the research and you have written it up. How are you going to present it? 
there are two ways in which this can be done. The first method is to circulate copies of the paper in advance to all the participants. This gives them time to read it before the seminar so that they can come already prepared with their own ideas about what you have written. The second method is where there is no time for previous circulation or there is some other reason why the paper cannot be circulated. In that case, of course, the paper will have to be read aloud to the group who will probably make their own notes on it while they are listening. In this talk, I am going to concentrate on the first method where the paper is circulated in advance as this is a most efficient way of conducting a seminar but most of what I'm going to say also applies to the second method and indeed may be useful to remember any time you have to speak in public. You will probably be expected to introduce your paper even if it has been circulated beforehand. There are two good reasons for this. One is that the participants may have read the paper but forgotten some of the main points. The second reason is that some of the participants may not in fact have had time to read your paper, although they may have glanced through it quickly. They will therefore not be in a position to comment on it unless they get some idea of what it is all about. When you are introducing your paper, what you must not do is simply read the whole paper aloud. This is because, firstly, if the paper is a fairly long one, there may not be enough time for discussion. From your point of view, the discussion is the most important thing. It is very helpful for you if other people criticise your work. In that way, you can improve it. Secondly, a lot of information can be understood when one is reading. It is not so easy to pick up detailed information when one is listening. In other words, there may be a lack of comprehension or understanding. Thirdly, it can be very boring listening to something being read aloud. Anyway, some of your audience may have read your paper carefully and will not thank you for having to go through all of it again. Therefore, what you must do is follow the following nine points. 1. Decide on a time limit for your talk. Tell the audience what it is. Stick to your time limit. This is very important. 2. Write out your spoken presentation in the way that you intend to say it. This means that you must do some of the work of writing the paper again, in a sense. You may think that this is a waste of time, but it isn't. If a speaker tries to make a summary of his paper while he is standing in front of his audience, the results are usually disastrous. 3. Concentrate only on the main points. Ignore details. Hammer home the essence of your argument. If necessary, find ways of making your basic points so that your audience will be clear about what they are. 4. Try to make your spoken presentation lively and interesting. This doesn't necessarily mean telling jokes and anecdotes. But if you can, think of interesting or amusing examples to illustrate your argument. Use them. 5. If you are not used to speaking in public, write out everything you have to say, including example etc. Rehearse what you are going to say until you are word perfect. 6. When you know exactly what you are going to say, reduce it to outline notes. Rehearse your talk again, this time from the outline notes. Make sure you can find your way easily from the outline notes to the full notes in case you forget something. 7. At the seminar, speak from the outline notes, but bring both sets of notes and your original paper to the meeting. Knowing that you have a full set of notes available will be good for your self-confidence. 8. Look at your audience while you are speaking. The technique to use is this. First, read the appropriate parts of your notes silently. If you are using outline notes, this won't take long. Then, look up at your audience and say what you have to say. Never speak while you are still reading. While you are looking at your audience, try to judge what they are thinking. Are they following you? You will never make contact with your audience if your eyes are fixed on the paper in front of you. 9. Make a strong ending. 
One good way of doing this is to repeat your main points briefly and invite questions or comments. Perhaps I can sum up by saying this. Remember that listening is very different from reading. Something that is going to be listened to has therefore got to be prepared in a different way from something that is intended to be read. That is the end of section four. You will have half a minute to check your answers.